Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We know that God's going to have a great, great word for you tonight, not because of who I am, because I'm nobody in the grand scheme of things, but it's greater that it's he that is within me than he that is within the world. And so I'm putting all my trust and all my reliance on his ability to speak through me. And I want you to do the same thing too. Because it is, it is your expectation that's going to draw from the spirit of God in me to speak a word to you that's going to bless your life. Amen? And we want to we wanna be a blessing to you. I don't just want to come up here spouting off a few you know, interesting facts or cliches or whatever. It's that's kind of interesting. I want to minister the word of life, a word in season, a word that that's the the pivotal point. If you're at a if you're at a juncture or at a point in your life where you need to hear God's word clearly, you need to hear a clear, concise word for the direction that you need to go in your life. I want to be available. I want to be a conduit in order for God to be able to speak that to you so that you can, you can go on and have and do and be the things that God has called you to. Amen? And so we, we, are, we are blessed to be here tonight. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you. Father, you boldly declare that the interest of your word gives light and gives understanding even unto the simple. And so, Father, as the, as the word of God goes forth tonight, I pray that you, you, you speak through my lips, you process thoughts through my mind. Father, I pray that the words come forth with boldness and with power, a word in due season, a, a concise word, a precise word, a word that is accurate, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing and son of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. And so, Father, as your word goes forth tonight, we just thank you right now that it will change lives. It will give direction with clarity. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Father, for clarity. We thank you for simplicity tonight. Father, we thank you right now that your word is, is all powerful. And we thank you, Lord, that it's coming to pass the things that you would have in our lives right now. And we thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, tonight we're going to be ministering to you. We're going to be talking about becoming a vessel unto honor. Becoming a vessel unto honor. 2 Timothy 2 19 through 22. If you, got, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn there with me. And we're going to start there. Because we're talking about becoming a vessel unto honor. Becoming a vessel God can use. Amen? And so, I'm going to be reading this out of the uh, New Living Translation. It said, but God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription. The Lord knows who are his. And all who belong to the Lord must, must turn away from evil. In a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions. The cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. 
Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. So in this passage of scripture, it's, 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 it's describing us, mankind, as, as vessels. We're also called, in the word of God, trees of righteousness. Jesus said, you shall know a tree by its fruit. Yeah. Amen? But in this particular passage, we're likening, we're likening unto utensils and vessels, containers. We are containing something. And when we, when, when we pour out our lives unto people, we're showing what's in us as a container. And a lot of times, we're filled with, you know, we like, to, we like to consider ourselves to be filled with the glory and the anointing and the power of God, but there's some other stuff in there too. You know what I'm talking about. But you know what? It's our responsibility to become vessels of honor. You don't just start off that way. You don't just start off, well, you know, once you get saved and get born again and you, you, you give your life over to the Lord, you're just not, you're, you're born again. You've been recre renewed, recreated. Your spirit man's been reborn. However, your lifestyle has not been reborn. Your past has still, still has an effect on your life. Hallelujah. But we're living in dirty, in a dirty, nasty, unforgiving world. I have seen American culture change a lot in my 44, soon to be in the next couple of days, 45 years. Time passes fast. Amen. We have to have a, a tough, thick skin as Christians. Having compassion and walking in love does not mean that you are to be someone's doormat. I remember as a child growing up watching TV, and of course many of you can, can attest to this, you know, when we watch TV, you know, and I mean, you know, this is back in the black and white days, so you know, I, you know, I know, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. But before the color TVs, wow. Well, now color TVs have been out for a while, but I still had a black and white TV in my room. Amen. But guess what? When you, saw, when you saw a TV show and a husband and wife went to bed, they didn't go to bed in the same bed. You didn't, you didn't think nothing of it. You knew your parents slept in the same bed, but the TV folks, they didn't sleep in the same bed. That, 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 was, the, that was the standard that they had there. You know, it was, it, was, it was like, you know, they got 10 kids, well, you know, they don't sleep in the same bed. How, what, uh, hmm, you know. They just start talking about the stork and all this and stuff. Well, you know, of course, when you get older, you know what the stork was. But anyway. But now, <laughs> you know, now, but now, you know, in 2015, you know, you're sitting there looking at TV. And I mean, you got, you, know, you can't just watch what's on TV nowadays. You know, now the man and woman are in the same bed and there's probably somebody extra in there too. Male or female? Like, next? Yeah. You know, I like, I, I like watching TV. I like, you know, watching shows and stuff like that. I was watching this one particular show, and, I, and they had been, it had been built up. You know, it had some good characters. It had a good uh, 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 plot line and all this, that, and the other. And I said, well, I guess that's going to be a pretty good show. And I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. And... Uh, I start watching the show, I'm thinking, man, this is a pretty good show. It's got good dialogue to it, you know, good acting and everything. You know, scene come up, dudes kissing each other. I said, oh, see, I'm done. Yeah. They, just, they, just, they just decided, that, you know, the show can't be complete unless we put this homosexual stuff on here. I was like, no, say it ain't so. Yeah. But that's the culture that we live in nowadays. You know, it's just, it, it, it's, you know, you got, you got shows like Modern Family. Well, it's the, the, modern, the modernness of this family is there's two gay dudes raising a girl, a little girl. And not my family. 
They could, you couldn't even have a family with that scenario. It's impossible. But this is our culture. This is our day. This is our era. But we are not to be like the world. Amen? We are not to be like the world. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9. How do we know that this is what's taking place or, or this is the culture or the era that we're living in? You should know this, Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9, that in the last day there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. That's just about every sitcom I can, you know, you can look at on TV. You know, the kids who just treat their parents like, you know, like they're doormats and just talk to them any kind of way. Not in my house, you get knocked out. They will be unloving, unforgiving. They will be slant. They will slander others and have no self-control. Sound familiar? They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win confidence of vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. Such women are forever following new teachings, but they are never able to understand the truth. These teachers oppose the truth just as Janaz and Jambres oppose Moses. They have depraved minds and a counterfeit faith. You see that? A counterfeit faith. But they won't get away with this for long. Someday, everyone will recognize what fools they are. Just as Genez and Jambres. I don't, this is as close as the pronunciation I can get to it. But it's okay, amen? I'm so glad I don't have to, I don't have to be a Bible scholar to be able to understand God's word. Because God's word is simple. Amen. I'm so glad that, you know, I can, I can stand and minister the word of God and I don't have to, you know, all I have to do is just trust, trust God. You know, study what he had for me to study. Trust him. And preach his word by faith. And, and wait for him to give the increase. Wait for him to give the unction. Wait for him to give the direction. And you're going to be blessed by it. My job is to help develop you in a rock solid, unmovable faith in Jesus. I am here to pump you up like Hans and Franz. We're going to pump you up. Hallelujah. In faith. Amen. Y'all remember that State Farm commercial, Saturday Night Live. I used to like them guys. We're going to pop you up with your girly, girly man arms. But don't fool yourself. As you are developing yourself in, in the righteousness of God, as you are becoming a vessel unto honor, you will not be the most popular person. And just go ahead and, and, and mentally agree with that. Know that. That you're not going to be the, because people are going to, they're going to backstab you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to sneer you. They're going to slander you. You know, and if you don't have any enemies, I doubt very seriously that you're walking in any righteousness or holiness. Because Jesus said you're going to have some enemies. Amen. My wife got a phone call the other day. They, you know, the devil's crowd so you know, so petty, and, you know, my wife got a phone call. They, they blocked their number and all this, that, and the other. She said she was about to not answer it, you know. I don't answer block phone calls. If, if, you, if you are not man or woman enough 
to let me see who you are, you don't really want to talk to me. I don't answer phone calls like that. I don't care what it is. You know, just say blocked or unavailable or unknown. Just unknown whether or not you're going to talk to me too. <laughs> Amen. But she got a phone call and they start, you know, slandering my name and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, hmm. I said, I must be coming up in God. Because yeah. people are just trying to hate on me. You know? But that's okay. Because Jesus said that was going to happen. Because, yeah. you know, if you go on a long time and everybody's patting you on the back and saying what, how good of a person you are, you might want to check yourself out. If somebody ain't hating on you, some, nobody's hating on you. Everybody's like, oh, you're the best thing since sliced bread. You want to check what road you're on. You might be on that wide road to destruction that the Bible's talking about. You know, because the Bible said narrow is the path of righteousness. Very few people going to be on it. Everybody's like, yeah, we're having a good time. Yeah, you're on that wide path to destruction that the Bible talks about. You want to check, you want me to do a Yui. You want me to go the other way. Amen? Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. You may lose someone you thought was your close friend. I think it's better to find out earlier rather than later who your real friends are and who your real friends should be. You know, if I, if, if, if I have an, if I have a friend and they, they are, they never see anything wrong with something that I'm doing as a Christian. I have to question, are they really my friend? Because I know I do something. Because we're human. No matter how big, no matter how, how, how small, I'm not saying, you know, you're committing great big sins or whatever. But you could do something that, you know, say, well, brother, well, what about so-and-so? Yeah. Yeah, the Lord's been dealing with me on that. You need to have friends like that that can, can speak into your lives. Amen? Someone that's that's trustworthy. That's a person of faith. You know, I've made a lot of mistakes in my past. But it's mainly due to the fact that I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. But I'm so glad I have a relationship with God now. I'm so thankful and so grateful that I don't have to go through life like what if. You know, just stumbling around in the dark like the world does. We can know for sure what God wants us to do. All you got to do is ask. He said, if any of you lack wisdom, what are we supposed to do? We ask of God, who gives to all men how much? Just a little bit. A little dab will do you. No, he gives it liberally. He doesn't hold anything back. Well, what's the problem if you're not hearing what God is saying? Well, you got to get your spiritual antenna tuned to God's station. His station don't change. Yeah. It's always the same. WGOD. 100.00. Y'all realize I'm just using that set as an example? But God, WGOD, 100.00. You are not going to hear God if you're down at 87.7. Or if you're up at 105.9, you are so far away from God hearing his voice. You got to get tuned back in. How do you get tuned back in? He said, he said if we confess our sins, he's faithful to, and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because obviously you, you have done something to get yourself out of position to hear God. So now you got whatever it is, whatever it takes, Lord, I, it, it's, not me, it's not you, it's me. You know, I used to break up with boyfriends and girlfriends and stuff, you know. It's not you. It's me. Well, this relationship with God, it's you, not God. Amen? It's you. Don't think God is off somewhere unconcerned. He's very concerned about your life. He's very concerned about what he called you to do and helping you to get to your next destination in him. And so you come to him. Lord, I missed it somewhere. 
I don't know where I missed it, but you are the repairer of the breach. You are able to meet me where I am to, and help me to be where I'm supposed to be. So, Lord, I'm asking for your help. I'm asking for your mercy. And he will help you, and you get dialed right back in. Now, you know, it's possible to kind of hear God. You know, if you've ever, it, 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 you're familiar with the, the, the radio dial, and we're saying, for example, God's radio station is 100.00, you could probably still hear God a little bit at 99.8. It's going to be very staticky. It's going to have a lot of interference. But you may hear a word here and there. You know, you hear, and you hear, excuse me, a word here or there, but it's not very clear. But we want, we want to hear God clearly. And you can hear God clearly. He wants you to hear him clearly. And that's why we pray in faith. We ask God to help us. And he will. Now the Lord puts a requirement for change on us. He puts the requirement for change on me. He puts the requirement for change on you, the individual. No individual, after receiving salvation, is qualified for all, God's, all of God's anointing and power right off the bat. You know, we first start, started off saying that. There's a cleansing that must take place, and there's also a maturing that must take place. Eloquent speech and charisma are not the indication of maturity. You know, you hear a lot of, a lot of preachers talk well. Speak well, great enunciation, charismatic, handsome, hair slicked back, cool shade, cool glasses, can, has all the lingos, know when to say hmm and yeah and, and can do all the lingo and can do all of the gestures and can do all the Christian, you know, the, the preaching type stuff. But inwardly the Bible calls them ravenous wolves. How do we recognize these people? Well, number one, you got to have a relationship with the Lord for yourself. Yeah. You study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word, word of truth. There are a lot of slick talkers out there. But you know what? The word of God, it cuts through all that mess. You know, a person can stand up and the Lord just go ahead and tell you, you know, you don't want to hear nothing they say. Or, you, or the Lord will say, hopefully in my case, take heed to what he's saying. This word is for you tonight. Amen? The Holy Spirit has been sent to indwell us, you and I, to help us in this transformation process. Turn with me to uh, John 15 and 26. And we're about to wrap this up. Where's our help going to come from? Well, Jesus did something about that over 2,000 years ago when he sent the Holy Spirit to indwell us. Amen? But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. John 16 and 13. Let's go 16 and 13. Talking about the Holy Spirit. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That's what puts us ahead of the world system. The Holy Spirit showing us things to come. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're showing me what I need to do today. I thank you that you keep me abreast of things that I need to, need to know. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you're showing me through the Holy Spirit, what I need to do this day. You speak those words out in faith, and before you know it, you have insight that you didn't have before. You have direction that you didn't have before. You have a, a sensing of what's right to do in this particular situation. Be careful who you call friend. You are the sum total of all your friends. 
you are the sum total of all your friends. You're going to have a hard time convincing me if all your closest associates and all your closest friends, they are top criminals and thieves and liars, and you know they've all done time, you know, for various illegal things. You're gonna have a hard time convincing me that you're an honest person, because all your closest friends, you know, they doing something they ain't got no minutes doing all the time, and you have to keep your hand on your wallet when they're around, like. How you doing? All right. Because your wallet might get missing around them folks. So you have to be careful who your friends are. James 4 and 4. It says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Come on. Here we go. Praise the Lord. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now, when Jesus was here, he was not, let's not get it twisted. Jesus did not frequent the bars and the strip clubs to compel people to follow him. He made himself available and accessible. There's a difference. He was recognized as rabbi or rabboni, meaning, meaning teacher or man of God. He wasn't trying to have swag. Jesus wasn't trying to walk around being cool. Jesus was not in the club. He was not trying to be with the hip crowd. He was here on assignment from the Lord. And people saw that he was the light of God. He was sent of God. He was from God. Jesus wasn't in the club. Jesus wasn't, yeah, girl. Yeah, come follow me. Yeah. I'm the light of the world. You ought to come with me. Nope. That wasn't Jesus. Jesus wasn't sitting down at the bar. You know, can I buy you a drink? I want to talk to you about the Lord. But, you know, to hear some people say it, you know, Jesus became like, you know, the cool folks to try to win people. No, he didn't. He was recognized. He was dressed in ministry robes and garment. He conducted himself as a man of God at all times. John 4.27 and we look at this particular scripture here, and it says that Jesus was talking to a lady, you know, in uh, 427, upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked to the woman, yet no man said, what sickest thou? Well, what does he want? Or why talkest thou with her? Because they knew Jesus was on assignment. Because see, she was a woman of Samaria, and they were like, why is Jesus talking to the Samaritan? Samaritan? That Samaritan woman. But Jesus is always doing stuff to, to make their minds go tilt, tilt, tilt. But Jesus was, was on a mission from God. Hallelujah. And so, you know, when you think about a vessel, you think about, you think about, let me get one of these buckets over here. This is a vessel. This is a vessel. It holds something. It can hold many things. But what it holds for the purpose that we use it for is for giving. We don't put soil diapers in here. We don't put your chewing gum wrappers in here. We don't put, you know, your discards and refuse and stuff like that in here. Be and when you see this in here, most people know what you're supposed to put in here. And some people put nothing. Some people put a lot. But they know it's supposed, money is supposed to go in here. 
some form of money. Check, coin, paper money, 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 money. Amen? Well, here's another vessel. Drinking glass. It's got water in it. It's good, tasty, clean water. It is clean, right? Oh, I guess it's too late now. Sanctify by the word of God and prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. But, you know what? We are all like this glass, and we're holding something. And I have to think to myself, okay, well, what kind of container am I? Who am I in God's kingdom? What am I, what kind of things am I holding? Well, what's determined by that is by what you allow in you, by what you watch, and by what you hear. The Bible talks about what we hear. He said that we are to guard our ears. He said, my son, attend to my word, incline thine ear into my saying. And that's the way you clean yourself out, by receiving God's word. Receiving God's word. Thank you, Lord. James 1.21. He says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. So you want to receive God's word. You want to meditate on God's word. And you want that to be the dominant force in your life. Not TV, not radio, not the media, not Facebook. Because, you know, if, if truth be told, we spend a lot of time on TV and we spend a lot of time uh, social networking, you know. I mean, we're just inundated with all kinds of, we're just inundated with all kinds of stuff to watch and to take our focus off the things of God. But we want to focus, we want to draw ourselves back into focusing on God. Because I'm just as guilty as you are. That TV, that TV, the right thing come on, and boom, you know, just like this afternoon, golf came on, boom, I was like, oh man, he's hitting that ball. You know? But how much time do we spend in that word? How much time do we spend reading God's word? Will it equal the time that we spend with the TV? I, I dare to say not. If you, if you are spending as much time in God's word as you are in front of your TV or social media or whatever, good for you. Because I venture to say 90% of Christians, now what's who we're talking about, Christians. 90% of Christians can't say that. But you know what, we're going to be different, amen? That's why the Lord had me to say it. You know, because see, me first. I got to hit the, t I'm, 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 I'm getting cut first. I'm not just telling you something that the Lord ain't dealing with me about. He's saying to me, yeah, you need to spend more time in my word. You need to pray more. You need to spend more time studying to show yourself approved. Amen? So we want to be stimulated. We want to be encouraged. We want to be, char I want to charge you to get in the word. I want to charge you to spend more time in God's word. It's good that you, you read a couple chapters, bump it up a couple more. If you're reading two chapters a day, bump it up to four. If you're praying 10 minutes a day, bump it up to 20 minutes. Be willing to, to give God more. And you will reap the benefits. I guarantee you, you will reap the benefits. Your life will change for the better. If you will purpose to go after God. Because see, we're, getting, we're in a time now, we're in a time now that if you don't live by faith, you're not going to make it. It's, getting, you know, it's great that gas went down, but they already said it's going back up. It's great that it's down to you know, two something a gallon. That's great. But what if it hits five? Are you going to make it? Praise God. You going to make it? Well, you can make it by faith. I know I'm going to make it by faith. 
I don't know nothing else to live by but, but this here. I'm not that intelligent. <laughs> Truth be told, I'm not that, uh, I'm not that well connected. I need Jesus. I can't be like somebody, well, you know, well, that's the, you know, that's, you know, that's Bill Gates' son, you know. Well, you know, you know he's going to make it. Look at all that money they got. They can't spend all that money up in 20 years, you know, 20 lifetimes. Well, I can't say that. I need to, I need to depend on the Lord. And I'm sure if many of you be honest, you have to say the same thing, too. And we won't make it without him. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity to, sp to minister your word to your people. Father, I pray right now that, the, that something has been said to stimulate, to encourage, to direct, to show the path that your people are to stay on and to, to push towards. Glory to God. We just thank you for this opportunity to minister to your word, Father. Minister your word. We thank you, Lord. That your word is encouraging people right now. And we just thank you, Father, that we are becoming the vessels unto honor. We are becoming vessels unto honor. Putting out the right things. Showing people that we are of God. And we thank you for this now. We thank you that it's coming to pass, even as, as we have spoken. In Jesus' name, amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving. <laughs>